Hi, fam. Coming to you in the afternoon with another short video. Well, I'm going to try to make it short. Hold on one second. Yes. I'm just here to tell you. What in the world is Candy Burris' friend, Carmen, I guess Cambris or something like that. She coming out, wishing her friend in that ugly ass costume, y'all. That is so ugly. And Candy's not an ugly girl, but that costume was crazy. And do anybody watch The Mad Singer? I'm going to be all over the world with this video, mainly because... I'm taping in the afternoon. Got off early. Well, no, because Friday I get off early anyway. But <clears throat> I've been working from home some of the days during the week because of the COVID-19. Trying to do uh, safe, uh, what do you call it? Distancing, safe distancing. And um, it's just all pretty much like that. But anyway... Just getting in this video because it came across my timeline. You know, I usually come to y'all all subtle, relaxed in the evening hours. Trying to get that last video in for you all so we can kiki laugh and go on to sleep <laughs> and repent later. But since I was off, excuse me. Since I was off, I didn't fall. That's just my chill, my old office chair acting up like it needs some oil or some. Fine tuning to it. Don't you go out there, Elijah, and holler anymore. Don't you go. Come here. <coughs> See, y'all. Um, he won't even let me wait. I know y'all ain't heard from him in a long time. Because I be checking. I be trying to tape at night when he's calm and cool and all that. But we in the Memorial Day weekend. And so, it just is what it is. Friday. See my daughter trying to clock me and I don't even know why she here. Hell her, her job ain't letting her make no time. She trying to figure out what I'm doing. I'm off the clock. I don't make my time for the weekend. She trying to tell me. They don't want to put her out the door for the holiday. Okay. Yeah I'm telling your business because you all up in my business. Anyway. We're going to go on and get to this video y'all. Because that's what it is. I got my YouTube family and I got my family biologically and they're wearing the hell out of me. But this is Memorial Day weekend. I'm pretty sure everybody have gotten off. Not everybody, but somebody. Some people have gotten the opportunity to get off early and start their Memorial Day holiday weekend a little earlier than normal. Okay. Most of us uh, have to start at 5 o'clock when we get off. Because that's just kind of where we live in. Then we have other people that have different jobs. And criteria of what their jobs demand of them. And then sometimes they get lead way and they get to leave early. All right. But I had put in my time the pro um, approximately the top part of the week. So that's why I get off early on Fridays. But I usually don't be doing videos on Friday. Because I be tired. But I was so tired today, y'all. And I had time on my hands. And I said, Lord, Carmen, Carmen, Carmen. And you know Mama Joyce ain't fond of her. Okay. Mama Joyce is not fond of Carmen at all. So, Carmen called herself, from what I understand, from another uh, social media feed. Another media feed that uh, was top. Damn, my mama on my nerve. Lord, have mercy. What? Okay, thank you. Okay, and trying to wash at that, y'all. And Mama Holly talking about the clothes are ready to get out. Come get them. I'm like, damn. Mm. Okay, so I kind of got Elijah in my office door shed and everything. And I'm holding him as we're taping to see what he stopped acting up. Stop it. But, okay, like I said, don't you holler, Elijah. Get out. 
Hopefully y'all won't hear him. Mm. But as you can see, that's what we're going through today. We got trial and tribulations at the house trying to get a video out. But hopefully y'all will kick in or turn me off and come back and take me in small doses when it comes to this video. Because we're going to be everywhere. Let me try to get on track. Let me just center myself and get back to the things I want to talk about. This y'all like right here. Carmen. You know, Mama Joyce had told us a long time when Candy had finally got on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is her childhood friend or somebody she entrusted and this, that, and third. Been friends for a long time. Okay, so she's been trailing behind Candy. Uh, we just throwing Nene in there for edification for right now, but we're going to get Nene shortly but sooner than you think. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, this Carmen chick, one of Candy Burris' friends from her past, and still hanging out there with her. You know, Mama Joyce had accused Carmen of trying to sleep with Todd and had been sleeping with Todd. You know, when Todd and her were just engaged, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, I'm honey. Mama Joyce trying to drop the tea out on Carmen. Like, you don't need to marry Todd or Todd trying to sleep with all your friends, this, that, and third. And, you know, can't, uh, Carmen, I always be trying to get your extra wigs that you don't want no more. You don't wore them to capacity, and then you just get her hand-me-downs. So or was that the weave? Hell, I don't know, but I know it was some extensions, some accessories to the hairline. Okay. And I, I find it very weird that Candy would bring out a single right after Nene brought out a single trying to go to bats with her. You know that little honey video? That she could let Nene just have for the whole season, or at least hell, to the fall coming in, Candy drop her. But no, she like she in competition. Whatever Nene do, Candy got to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? I cannot believe it. You know, that's a honey EP that Nene brought out. There. Yes, it's a toe tapper. It's a toe tapper. You know, maybe a club version here and there. You know, I'm grooving to it. But that shit Candy got. I don't know what that what it is. I'm like, honey, I like Toddy for the party better. Even though you made it for Kim Zozette. But I that was a hit one, you know. For the kids or whatnot. I call, I guess they call themselves the gays. But uh yeah, now you coming up with this other one. And my daughter said she probably got it'll probably be a hit with the gays and their club scene and all this voguing and, and stuff of that nature. Because Todrick, that's kind of what he does in certain videos. He vogues a lot. But I don't know, child. I, I couldn't get with it. I mean, it was just like, girl. And then you call yourself coming out. I mean, Carmen had said something about, um, don't say nothing unless you winning or something like that. And I'm like, where can the win? And just because she won a mad single, who the hell look at that show? Huh. I mean, this is like America Idol has gotten so saturated, so bored and all of that. We know it's on, but that ain't mean we're going to go look at it. And I think I even told y'all about she was on a mass Singer long before she had caught herself winning. Because it, it just, girl, the little synopsis they were giving on the little people that were up there dressing up, grown ass folk, dressing up like it's Halloween in a their favorite costume or colors or whatever. And they look like total nuts. But I'm like, she wasn't first in Escape. Hell, I saw Tiny over Candy when it came to singing. Well, you know, the Scott sisters, that one over to the left and that one in the middle. Them girls can sing. They can blow. They can sing. Okay. And then I would give it to Ka I mean, to uh Tiny. She can blow a little bit. Okay. The damn Candy. Uh-uh. She was like the Supremes. Get in the back. Get in the back, honey. Get in the back. She ain't like Tamar now. Now, see, that's my thing. Tamar got over her. Tamar could be a background singer, do white girl, how she called them folks, background singers. But she can also blow on her own. And we seen Tamar go out there and do the whole thing. But Candy, I'm like, girl, you had that. Girl, you had that mother's love. <sighs> play that was going on and hell even Portia Williams sounded better than you girl even Portia Williams sounded better than you even a little EP she had out front line or deadline hell I don't know what it was um uh, um uh, flat line I think it was called but anyway that, that sounded better than what you had hey, girl even Kim Zosie had lip syncing to Tartar to the party sounding better but, girl, I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. You, girl, you can't rap at your young age. And when you get to be, if you are lucky, blessed, however you want to see it, to get to Nene's age, 54, 54, 52, 52, however they ranging in there. You know, because sometimes people lie about their age, but it just is what it is. You still can't sing. I mean, Nene rap better than you. And she older than you. And I'm like, girl. I'm like, Candy, Candy, Candy. But, you know, Candy ain't going to be in my book good for a long time. Because she embedded in my brain that she sat up there and had a birthday party in the corona era. 
no mask nowhere. Even she blew out candles on her cake. I'm like, girl, did you get tested? Did you get tested for COVID? Because I wouldn't eat not now slap bit of that cake. I thought, uh-uh, no, nah, girl, no, nah, uh-uh. But isn't that the most hideous costume that you could possibly find that she could put on and call herself a mass singer? Then she was going against Bow Wow and some other person. I'm like, what? When, when did the... <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh, no, we know Bob Bob can't sing. He's a rapper, so what are we doing on a mass single? Oh, child, yeah. But I had been told y'all about that. She was on that show, and then nobody really say anything in the comments, so I ain't bring it back up. But yeah, she called herself winning, and that's one of her spinoffs, of course. Candy Ski Trip, Candy's Wedding, Candy Coded. Uh, anything else that she do, guys, as a spinoff? I'm just trying to give y'all the information that I got to give them, and that's Nene and her spiritual guide person. Must have looked like a hooker, but you know, I, I you know, I ain't I take it back. She ain't no hooker, just give me the perception when I saw that particular episode. I'm like, mm -mm. and I'm like, do we really want Greg and Nene against Todd and Candy? I mean, who would win really with the battle of the wits? Not putting hands on each other, but the battle of the wits, girl. <sighs> but we know the MVP, MVP. Uh, MVP player of this video, that Mama Joyce, because she'll get everybody straight. Girl, you know she'll get Nene towed back to the flow straight. Mm-hmm, I am. It ain't, it ain't what's called. Okay, get, get out of my guy. You see what I'm saying? Now I got my 81-year-old mama telling me what I should be doing. Okay, then I'm off. I'm off. I don't did my time. <sighs> but anyway, that's one of the uh, judges of the mass Singer. Uh, ain't that a hideous costume? But like I said, Candy try to get in that elite club. You know what I'm saying? The Illuminati, the... Uh, the uh, secret society type situation. I've been told y'all about that selling the soul and all that. I just wonder who's going to come missing or deceased or something around somebody she loves or, you know, one of her family members. It's, it's coming to pass because he can't be coming up too fast, too soon. You know what I'm saying? And that's Carmen, the one who had said on her Instagram account when she was uh, congratulating Candy on her big win against Nene, meaning she won the mass singer and she number one when Nene keeps saying she number two and this that and that and then she was saying Candace stay winning and I'm like really she said what I sound but there mm -hmm. but anyway I'm like girl what did mama Joyce do to get her in that ring of being circled around the elite because you know Candace don't took a picture with uh the former first lady um Michelle Obama and she took one with Gail King you know Oprah's friend Probably done took one with Oprah or been parties with Oprah. Who knows? But I say that to say this. Uh, Carmen, you, you need to sit yourself down now before we sick Mama Joyce on you. Because Mama Joyce I already said you be wearing Candace old hand-me-down wigs and accessories and probably clothes too. Now, you started your insurance business. You need to stay in that lane. Stop trying to get with these celebrities or reality so-called stars. And, and trying to take up for your friend Candy. When Candy can't take up for herself, she can take up for herself, honey. She don't need you. Let this fight be between Candy and Nene. Because we don't want to bring in other people. Because that's when other people get dogged and they become collateral damage. Trying to take up for grown ass folks that's out here doing shit. And that's Carmen over there to the right. Like I said, she, even Shamil can sing better. Not Shamil, um, Sh Shamari. Shamari DeVoe. She can sing better than Candy. Outsung her and with no effort either. It was effortless when she was on the show. You see, I can't. I'm pretty sure I talked against her from coming back. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. And even Candy said something about Kim Fields too. When Kim Fields on, there, I'm like, girl, that was your lifeline to acting because she's been in the field. She know people. And you tried to say she wasn't good for the show, so girl. And you ain't even number one on this show, Candy. So I, I don't understand, but you know. Like I said, she don't did something. She got to sacrifice something to get these little accolades she got. As y'all say, she making it. She she got money. She got that back. She you know check. Don't check for me unless you got a check for me scenario going on. Oh okay okay. I'm just saying she ain't in the limelight like y'all think she are earning her stuff. This stuff is being given to her because she done did something that most people will find despicable. But that's just for eyes to see and ears to hear and understand. Okay? So, let's get on into this episode. 
of this tea, that reality tea Vlog Insight had put out for us. It comes from Allison. Yes, and it's spelled A-L-L-I-S. I'm sorry, A-L-I-S-U-N. Okay, that's just her article that she put out for her employer, Reality T. Okay, she titled it, Nene Leak says, Candy Birds has never been number one in anything she has done. And I agree with you. I agree with you to a certain degree. She might have been not in the entertainment field, but she been number one when she had uh, Baby Girl Riley. Yeah, she was number one. She will always be seen number one in that book, that aspect. But in her career, per, per se, because, you know, I, I don't understand. They go back and forth with who wrote Scrubs, honey. Candy be saying she wrote Scrubs, and then Tiny Tamika Harris be saying she wrote Scrubs. They both got, uh, what do you call it? They both got... I ain't gonna say certificates, but a, a, a trophy or an award from the AppScap community in the music industry. And it claimed the fame. Both of them wrote it. So I don't understand how Candy can solely say it. She did this on her own. Now, she writes other music. She did some other stuff for Beyonce, I believe, and they were hits. You know, so we ain't gonna put it from her that she's not a good writer when it comes to music but i think that's where she needs to stay make her coins that way she can has been in the back for so long she had been itching to get to the front so if that's an accolade for her to have won the mass singer this that and the third and it boosted her uh esteem to do things where she's not behind a mask or costume and you can come out and see her because then she go on the tour with the dungeon and she had some acts where she was singing i don't think anybody appreciated her singer act antics either there so i, I don't understand but having karma come out as in your defense yeah i come should shut the shit up because nene would eat her for breakfast okay then mama joyce would come around the corner too about what karma trying to come off on you candy why she using your name why she up on your platform trying to boast you up when you don't need no boasting up what is karma trying to do is she trying to get our money girl see i can see mama joyce already there so you might need to tell Common to sit down somewhere okay defend you if somebody coming for you and it's in person okay then that's another situation you just taking up for your friend unless it's a one-on-one -on -one battle then if it is then common needs to shut the fuck up in a sense she needs to sit her ass down play her position as a friend and don't say nothing unless you finna get jumped and then that's when you jump in okay because we all grown we all grown we know who our haters we know who the people that like us and then we got to watch out for the ones that be playing the fence on both ends you know what i'm saying but anyway we're going into the article it says poor nini leaks the much victimized star of real housewives of Atlanta, has once again found herself on the receiving end of some unsavory thoughts i'm not sure what it says about humankind when people have been the subject of numerous unkind sentiments decide to make sour comments of their own it's just another day in the life of our misunderstood nini Every now and then, oh, what am I saying? Every five minutes, Nene seems to use her voice to verbally slap someone. But you guys, it's always to defend herself and never to start something. We must keep in mind Nene is about a mere pawn in the oral battles that take place on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I got to say, even when we didn't see Nene doing the taping a lot of season 12, they sure had, meaning the re regular the cast members that were being filmed and featured, they sure had a lot to say. When Nene at? When did it? So I'm kind of thinking, are y'all riding her name for clout? Y'all tell me, can't y'all talk about who's on the show and what's who's doing what and when and where? Why y'all got to bring up somebody ain't being featured yet? So it can't, it, you know, that's just my sidebar, but it makes me wonder, yeah, okay, so you, you say you don't like Nene, Nene is not a, a real important uh, intricate part to keep Real Housewives of Atlanta rolling, but yet you already che you always check it for her, even in her absence. So I find it very, very <sighs> strange. But anyway, we go back to the article. It said, um, 
But you guys, it's always to fear herself and never to start something. We must keep in mind, Nene is but a mere pawn. Okay, I read that. Okay, everyone from Kenya Moore to Eva Marcel has specifically targeted Nene for their own gain. Candy Burris have gotten in on the barrage of malevolent character assassination. And Nene responds in an effort to keep her sterling reputation untarnished. Okay, apparently nothing can stop Nene. She can be unfairly reprimanded for her attitude. She can be forced to apologize so people will film with her and she can conduct interviews from her home so she does not have to get out on these pestilence filled streets thank goodness recently candy had a little interview on her own and nene name was in her mouth because nene name is in everyone's mouth if you don't already know and i'm like check it out check it out check it out check it yes you would not have a storyline if you didn't bring Nene Leaks in there somewhere, somehow. Whether it's negative, you're talking about her, or where it's positive. Most of it's negative. That's just my sidebar. Once again, I'm chiming on that I do concur with some of the stuff this young lady is saying in her article. Okay? There will be no Real Housewives of Atlanta if it wasn't for the first founding women. Okay? Now, we know Deshaun Snow didn't make it. We know Lisa Wu didn't make it. You know, Sheree was going back and forth. Kim Zosiak was going back and forth. But no longevity there. Nene is pretty much the one that left, tried to do other avenues in acting and try to, you know, get her resume a little bit more plumped out there. Uh, for anyone that wanted to hire her, could say she's high caliber. These are in her home words, not mine. Okay. And then she saw, mm, I need to get back on my choo-choo train that I started because that's making me more money than what I'm trying to do out on this side. So, of course, she was knocking, knocking, knocking. And they were taking, you know, calls from her and letting her come in for different interviews, just trying to see what she wanted to say to get back on because both sides were suffering. She was suffering monetarily and really bravo was suffering a little bit too so that's why they brought her back you know she, they know she's good for the action pack okay she gonna start something and continue and going and she gonna make like she ain't did nothing <laughs> it's sort of like can you more is that not right that's why i said they two two of the birds that flock together will stay together they will always be uh enemies but they are two of the same people cut from the same cloth Okay, going back to the latest article, it said Nene appeared in a video sit down with the Breakfast Club radio program and had a response for Candy Words. And I did a video on that as well with Charlemagne, Angela G, and DJ Envy. And I played a lot of the clips from uh, that Breakfast Club interview. I didn't know it was connected with iHeart because I got copyrighted. And I ain't, I ain't get no money for that, y'all. I was mad as hell, too, because I was still growing a lot of people watching that video. But it just is what it is. Some things work some things don't work okay so y'all probably won't be getting video clips or audio clips uh from different conversations unless i do it because i did do a lot a lot longer than i would have done it but if it's like maybe five minutes i can probably give it to you other than that don't expect that in my videos i'm sorry guys oh because i told you from the get-go i get paid how little how lot i i, I want to get paid or i'm gone pretty much i'm gone i'm gone i ain't gonna lie to you but anyway going back to the article uh it says um she appeared on The Breakfast Club and had a response for Candy's words. Candy seems to feel like Nene Venture into therapy has been less about a spiritual awakening and more about damage control. Where in the world would Candy get an idea like that? The nerve. Naturally, Nene wants to get Candy straight. Okay. What damage do I need to control? Nene asked uh, incredulously. Uh, incredulously or something like that but anyway certainly not the fat shaming definitely not complaining for having to take care of an ill spouse the alleged spitting at a cold star could never be an issue but look you guys candy is obsessed with nene i mean who isn't see nene posted a cryptic video this one time but mentioned no names despite the anonymous nature of the video subject candy assumed she was the topic and became quite angry being the understanding compassionate person that she is nene reached out to candy and made a valid attempt to set Candy straight. But no, Candy was firing back. Text messages and this conflict only proves Nene's point that she remains the internal matriarch of Atlanta. Now I can see it from both sides. I had some of my family members here on YouTube say, no, she talking about Kim Zosiak. And I can see that to a certain degree. Then I can see just right in my face, you know, that she got to be talking about Candy Burrs, you know. Um, 
And it just may just be to draw the cards. They may be annoying Nene because they don't want Nene on the show. Or they want Nene on the show, but they just don't want to pay her the money anymore. Or if Nene could say, okay, y'all don't have to give me a raise for the next two seasons. And I'll stay at status quo. Uh, but who want to do that? Everybody want to get a little raise. It's maybe but a little something. But Nene, I know she get greedy when it comes to that buffet table. And, and uh, of uh, trying to exert yourself for what you feel you're worth. And I'm like, Nene, you ain't going to never make the money that you see. That Bravo Entertainment uh and all these other entities that are are making all of this ma uh be able to be happening meaning the filming the production people they have to pay the lightning the setting all that money had to come somewhere and then the people's salaries so technically they got to recoup their money back before they try to straighten you out with a uh, what they call a so-called raise i mean the executives always going to be uh favored first and the people that they had to probably get the money from to even start the project or the seasons to come. You know, they're going to get paid royally. All right. And they're going to be sitting on their ass because they started out with money to be able to lend somebody some money so they can make some money. So, you know, the money ain't going to go to the true players in the game and making it all happen. The characters of the particular piece of resistance of a show. No, it's going to go to the people that had to front that money. So, if you ain't learned that now, Nene, I don't know what it's going to take for you to learn that. You are just a small piece of the fish that they are putting out there for people to take part of. That's all. You're a part of production. You're a part of the act. You ain't the mover and shaker that's out here having money on top of money on top of money i'm talking about the elite baby you're not the cream of the crumb or you wouldn't be out here nickel and diamond said you something to entertain people see people that got money 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 and they like their autonomy or they like to be invisible to other people but yet they're the ones that really make bravo true entertainment you ain't gonna never know them folks you ain't gonna never see them folks half the time because they run in very small small circles all right, girl, but anyway, sorry I had to give y'all that lesson, but it's more so for the people that don't try to understand why Nitty gets paid a certain much, a certain point. Any actor or actress that's on a particular show or sitcom or movie, you only get a certain portion. You don't get what you think you should be getting just by looking at the numbers and the revenues that's making out the production that you're playing a part of. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get it. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it just is what it is. But anyway. Going back to the article, it said, um, okay, but, um, you know, it says Candy fired back. She didn't really believe Nene. She thinks she's, you know, the, the it factor, the shit at the time, and that Nene was talking about her, okay? Then it said, why would Candy say such a thing? Well, Nene knows, she said, she, Candy, has been boring for a while now. What better way for someone to call your name? Candy then put it next to Nene Leaks. Bloop, bloop. Translation, Nene is the most important person on this show and quite possible the world. But don't fret, Nene was done, wasn't done. She added, Candy just wants to be number one. You know, she's never been number one on anything she's done and that's true i got i got to agree i got to agree with anybody about that because even with her so-called grammy women grammy winning type of situation it was always somebody else like beyonce or um tlc that actually took what she wrote and put it into fruition and you know it didn't really matter who produced the song it was just we were checking for who was singing the song you know what i'm saying because they get a very small cut unless they know for a, a fact this shit gonna hit you know what i'm saying they just know it and you're gonna have to pay me twenty thousand for this this record this one record twenty thousand because i know it's gonna be a hit and then that's all they get unless they set up another deal on the back end to get that and usually it doesn't come like that it's like a one deal thing because we don't know if it's gonna be a hit to see if what it is you, you give us that we gonna make trillions off of it i'm sorry you only got that twenty thousand. so candy's not content with that type of money and that type of prestige she wants to be known more than that she wants to become the artist itself okay and i'm like that's not what you were born with that's not your talent that's not your ministry okay writing songs are more so your talent that was god given singing uh-uh 
unless you want to be a doo wop girl. But be the the main person. Somebody come to see. Get up on that that microphone and that stage, and you built out something. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not for me. I can't speak for the rest of my YouTube family. We all have different opinions. We have different sound taste, quality taste, and you know it's just a barrage of us. And, and we have a plethora of different things we congregate to. So hey. It just is what it is. All right. But um, going back to the article, it says, hey, Nene, where do you keep your Grammy? Oh, that's right. You don't have one. And according to Billboard, Candid has been number one. So there's there's that. The streets also can say Candid's the highest paid on Housewife, which must not sit well with the ever maligned Nene. That said, Nene laminates uh, Lamont. <sighs> Let's just say Nene just sits there and take it. That Candy just wants to be number one. And the, the seat is not available. But no one, uh, but no worries. Nene will let Candy know as soon as she's done. It's available when I give it to her. She's number two. Okay, while Candy navigates a possible new Bravo spinoff, her restaurant chain, Very Large Family, the entity known as Mama Joyce, multiple side hustles, and music career, and glad we have Nene to keep everything in perspective. Regardless of what someone else achieves in their life, we must always remember Nene is number one. Okay, and then that ends her article pretty much. <laughs> okay, but basically what I'm saying, hey, whether you're number one, whether you're number two, three, four, five, or you are non-existent, you're still important to somebody someone loves some you okay you should love yourself first and foremost but you know it just is it is what it is you know i think carmen still need to keep her mouth shut because mama joyce will come for her yes lord mama joyce will come out the wool works on carmen looking for carmen if she think carmen gonna get something monetary from mentioning candy's name and taking up for her in a pu uh, public eye no that's what we got taught for and that's what we got mama joyce for we don't need carmen coming out uh, to put her two and three cents in where it's not needed. That's how Candy is when uh, Kenya and Cynthia and Eve and all of them are fussing. She thinks she need to get her little two cents in because she feel left out. Now, sit your ass down just let her watch. Get you some popcorn. Get you your favorite drink. And just let it unfold. And when they ask your opinion, have an opinion at the time. Don't do like what Tanya said. You didn't have an opinion. <laughs> because you, you felt you weren't a part of it. Or you felt that. Tell you when your ace boon coon at the time, so you didn't want to recognize her. But yes, honey, can't sit your friend down, calm. She don't need to be in this. She don't need to be in it, girl. But that's all I got for this interview. I just thought it weird coming out. Carmen coming out the woodwork. Like, girl, Mama Joyce going to tie you up. But who do y'all think has the best single? Candy or Nene? They're both out. They're both good for somebody's ears, but like I said, I'm not feeling candy, so I'm going to say I'm biased because I'm still mad at candy for having a birthday party, whether she knew about it or whether she didn't know about it. I know she knew about it, okay? I just know because women know. We have that intuition, so I'm going down. And for you to have a birthday party with the masses and not even share of a decent, decent, uh, decent hint of favoring wearing a mask, I am disappointed with you, okay? But that's all I got. So I'm like, if you want to continue to root Carmen on and Mama Joyce going to get on your ass later on behind them scenes, go ahead, Candy. Go ahead, okay? But leave Nene alone. If the, if the uh, damage and the beef can't stay between you two, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to, because you don't see nobody having Nene coming after your butt. She ain't trying to chime in, all right? <laughs> So, honey, please, Nene came for you. You came again after the other ones. You came after Tiny had put you on because nobody was checking for you, Candy. You were brilliant behind the scenes. Sort of what Todd is, in a sense. Y'all are background people. Y'all are not meant to come out. And when you exert yourself and try to come out, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't be favorable for you either. But it is what it is. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about subject matter. Am I wrong? Am I right? Uh, what's y'all take on it? Okay, because it's kind of messed up. It was kind of fake, foolery, fuckery, fraudulent activity going on with Carmen trying to come in and defend Candy. Candy don't need nobody to defend her. And if she do, she in the wrong business. She is in the wrong business. Okay? But I'm going to need Candy to do a little bit more than Mad Single because I don't, I don't hear nobody really checking for Mad Single. Okay? But the pop world. But it just is what it is. And she over there competing with Bow Wow. And he a rapper. <laughs>
<laughs> miss me with that, honey. Miss me all the way with that. But that's all I got, y'all. I will check y'all out next video. Peace.